We lose nutrients from cooking our food, and unfortunately, we do to a fairly drastic extent. What's interesting is if you look up denaturing of vitamins on a table, it doesn't actually seem like these vitamins lose exposure to heat. You know, it doesn't, like vitamin A is slightly sensitive, vitamin C is the only real concern, the only real unstable vitamin on paper is vitamin C, but when we actually cook the meat, various juices are lost and this temperature is very high over a long period of time, so we're actually losing fat and juices from the meat. And that might not seem like a big deal, but if you actually cook the meat to medium well, well done, you lose 35 to 50% of the B vitamins and 10 to 20% of the other vitamins. So what that means is a person consuming a primarily well-cooked food diet will be getting much more calories with less vitamins, whereas a person consuming a raw food diet will be getting less calories with more vitamins. That's why we see people on cooked carnivore consuming a higher volume of food for the most part. And we can also speculate that that might be a reason that people have a hard time losing weight and satiating their appetite initially on this diet is not only because they're cooking their food a lot, but they're not eating high quality nutrient dense foods. And it's kind of like a double edged sword. Not only are you buying foods that don't have a lot of vitamins, you're cooking any vitamins that were in them down, you know, 50% for B vitamins and 10, 20% for the other vitamins. A lot of this stuff will also tie into fresh versus frozen. And I honestly didn't even think I needed to do a video on fresh versus frozen after talking about this, but the enzymes are, there's three in meat to my understanding. The light glycolytic enzymes, which turn the muscle glycogen into lactic acid after the animal dies. And what that does is it changes the pH of the meat. It inhibits certain bacterial growth. Uh, the function of that just seems to be like a process in nature. I don't really understand what benefit there is. I mean, from a taste perspective, there is a benefit. It changes the color and texture of the meat. Uh, the second enzyme, the proteolytic enzyme, which changes the size of the protein and makes it smaller, is definitely, it definitely seems important for digestion, but in the context of consuming the enzyme in its raw form, can it help digestion? Speculative, yes, it's a possibility, but on paper to me it just seems like the, that enzyme only has a function before you consume the meat, and then if you cook the meat, it, I mean, wouldn't it make sense that the proteins are still smaller? So that's just speculation on a, one reason why raw meat might digest better. But it's more just likely that when you degrade the vitamins and all those things in the cooked meat, there's more waste. So the third enzyme, the fat hydrolyzing enzyme, we know that when we ferment certain animal products, the vitamin K2 content increases. And what's interesting is when we look at these enzymes in cured meat and charcuterie, we look at them as beneficial, but in fresh meat, we consider it spoiled. So there's definitely something to be said about the fat hydrolyzing enzyme and how it it benefits the meat in regards to certain nutrient and bacteria. and But when you eat that, technically speaking, the vitamin K2 content would be higher regardless of whether you cooked it or not. So there's definitely an importance to enzymes in raw foods and how they change the meat in regards to taste as well as nutrient content. But you know we don't really lose them when the meat is frozen and cooking, the main concern with cooking is the vitamin content. So to me, these enzymes need to be studied more. There's just not enough information out there for me to be, do anything but speculate on them. And I guess we talk about my anecdotes. So technically speaking, I've really only been on a raw animal diet. Although in some videos, I sear my meat on the outside and add salt to it, the inside's still raw and I'm kind of like tricking my body that I'm eating cooked meat. So maybe that's why I eat more in some cases, but that's just like an interesting anecdote that I've noticed is that I consume you know, you know, I can't really say that because when I do an only raw meat diet, in, in a lot of cases, I can ramp myself up to consuming like three to four pounds of raw meat a day if I wanted to, if I was super active and ate as much as I could every meal. So it's not necessarily a food volume comparison of raw versus cooked. To me, it's just more, it's just easier to eat a large amount of it and it's more palatable with salt on it in some cases. Not that raw meat when you're adjusted to it isn't palatable. But, you know, I've always consumed organ meats and egg yolks and, and most of my foods raw. I would say in regards to food volume and percentages, I mean, searing your steaks on the outside is probably less than 5 to 10% of your food being cooked. And just in the overall context of the food I've been eating for the past few years, I'd say I'm less than 5% heated or cooked foods. 
I just wanted to clarify a few things. I know you guys have seen me doing like some one of my more recent zero carb meals. Like I cooked some eggs and maybe I cooked the meat a little more, but that is not what I have usually been doing. And even these past two weeks, I've kind of graduated back to completely raw a little bit. So, um, can you be healthy on both a cooked carnivore diet and a raw carnivore diet? I think you can, but what matters is the initial nutrient content of the food, you know. If the food doesn't have these vitamins and minerals and nutrients in the highest amount, then it doesn't really matter if you cook half of them out if they weren't in it in the first place. And, you know, unfortunately, people don't understand the importance of nutrient density of the meat as well as cooking temperature and how it affects nutrient density. You know, you're buying poor quality meat, you're cooking all the nutrients out of it, and you're complaining that you're eating, you know, four to five pounds of meat a day and you're still hungry and you're not losing weight. I think this is a big topic that people need to hear in general in the zero carb carnivore diet. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you'd like to support me, please just share the channel. Uh, there's a bunch of other ways you can support me as well. Uh, I'm trying to be more active on Twitter lately. I'm, I'm on own. We're doing a live stream. Uh, if I wake up for some reason at like 5 or 6 a.m. on Sunday, I'll do one for the Europe, my European followers. Because like literally 20 or 30 percent of my viewers are European. So I'd like to do one earlier and then we'll do one around the same time we did last week around 12 noon to 1 p.m. EST on Sunday. I want to do two live streams. If I miss the first one in the morning, then I might do one later, although I don't really know what time zone I'd be catering to by doing, uh, you know, a, a live stream at 8 to, you know, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. But let me know, guys, any other videos you'd like to see in relation to this. Um, you know, the fresh versus frozen thing is kind of just the same information, so uh, maybe we'll do that. I just wanted to throw in that cooking can also affect the histamine content of the food, especially if you grill it or fry it. Uh, boiling actually reduces histamine content. I just wanted to throw that in there and that histamine is another thing that can be discussed in light of my recent problems with it. And for Goji Man and all you people who are start, starting to talk shit about histamines and the carnivore diet, the only reason you're bringing that up is because you found about it from me and that's the first time I've ever had that problem in six years. And it's only a problem in a fairly select percentage of people. I would say less than 10% of people have a sensitivity to histamine and that's mainly because of gut problems in regards to certain enzyme that's produced to break down histamine.